Okay. Good afternoon to all. Am I visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So today we are going to see what is mean by the machine. Okay. And what are the different techniques are there? What are the different points that we are going to cover in this session? So first, we are going to see what are the different data structures that you have studied. Okay. Uh, first data structure you have studied that is a stack. Second, queue. Maybe you have studied or not. Then third one is a linked list. Then fourth one, tree graph. All these are the data structures. Third one is the tree. Fourth one is the graph. Then fifth one, array. Array is also one of the data structures. And sixth one is the linked list. Okay. So these are the some data structures that are available, right? And one of the data structure again you. That is nothing but seventh data structure is nothing but hash table. Seventh data structure is a hash table. So today we are going to see a new data structure that is nothing but the hash table. Okay. So what is there in hash table? See, as we are saying that our hash table is a data structure. So what is the purpose of your hash table? Your hash table is used to store the data. What is the purpose of hash table? It is used to store the data. But as storing of data in stack, queue, whether you are linked a list, array, there is a particular way to store a data in every data structure. There is a particular way to store a data in every data structure. Your array it stores the sequential manner data. Linked list is also storing a sequential manner data. Tree, it is storing other hierarchical data. Or your graph, graph is also storing a relational data. Or there is a relationship between data. Similarly, stack and queue, these are also having a different representation of a data. Similarly, your hash table is also having a different representation than for another type of a data structure. Okay. So, what is mean by the hash table? See. Hash table. Okay. So, first, hash table, it is a data structure. What is the first thing you have to say that? Your hash table it is one of the data structure, and it is used to store a data. It is used to store a data, and here data is stored in the form of a table, which are having two fields, which are having two fields. Don't fill that in memory. Okay. In that first field is your hash value. First field is the hash value, and another field is the key value. Another field is the key value. Right? Your hash table is represented by two fields. First one is a hash value, another one is a key value. Where hash value it is the location. Hash value it is a location where you are going to store your element. Where you are going to store your element means this hash value is nothing but index. This value, hash value is nothing but your index. Where you are going to store your key value. That you can put key value store on it. Okay. Now, as we are saying, your hash table is also having the your uh, index where you are going to store the element means your hash table these are created by using associative array okay 
Your hash tables are created by using associative array. Mean here the data is stored in the hash table, but it takes the help of your array. It is taking the help of your array. See how it looks like. Your hash table it looks like this. Here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the index value. This is nothing but index, or it is also called as the hash value. It is also called as a hash value. And for this index value or hash value, you are going to store the element. Like this. So these are the key values. Right? So in this way, your data is stored into your hash table. Right? There are two fields. First one is your key value index field or your hash value. And another one is a key value that is nothing but actual data stored into that particular position. Okay. Now, while using this hash table, while using this hash table, you have to store the data into hash table by means of using some hashing techniques by means of using here some hashing techniques. So you have to take the help of hashing technique. You have to take the help of your hashing technique. And with the help of this hashing technique, what we are going to find, we are going to find the location. What we have to find, we are going to find the location where we can store that particular element. Okay, right. So, and this finding the location for particular element from the your hash table, such a technique it is called as a hashing. That technique it is called as a hashing. So, hashing it is one of the techniques. See, next, what we are going to see. That is nothing but hashing. Okay, hashing, it is one of the techniques for finding out the value or finding out the position for element from your hash table. Okay, now as we know, there are two searching techniques available in a data structure. First one is a linear search and another one is a binary search, okay? Two searching techniques are there. First one is a linear search and another one is a binary search. These are the two techniques available in your data structure where this linear search is having the worst complexity as O of M worst complexity as the Vivo of N and your binary search is having a worst complexity of O of N log N. Means, means whenever finding the element by using a linear search or your binary search, they both are having the complexity. That is a worst case complexity. And now, when you are using a hash table or if you are using the data or you are searching for an element that is stored into the table, that table is nothing but hash table, right? The searching technique that is applied to hash table, such a searching technique, it is called as a hashing. Okay, so your hashing is nothing but the third searching technique. Hashing is nothing but your third searching technique where we are going to find the element from your hash table. Okay, got it? Right? Now, as compared to your linear search, it is having the 
worst complexity as the O of n. Binary search is having the worst complexity of O of n log n. So whenever you are using a hashing, you are having a complexity of O of one. All the types of complexity, best case, average case, and your worst case. All three these complexities are O of one because here your elements are stored at particular index. Elements are stored at particular index, and you are directly going to access that index. You are directly going to access that particular index. Okay, so you are working on only one element, or whenever element is search, your element is search according to the index value, not its a actual value. So all the whatever comparisons are required in your linear search and binary search, all the comparisons are minimized, and there is only one comparison in your hashing technique. So this hashing technique is very much faster than your linear search and binary search. Okay. Now the question is that as we know the hashing is used for searching the element from your index or from your hash table, right? But the question is that how to store element into your hash table? How to store the element into your hash table. Okay, so these there are some hashing techniques that are used for storing the element into your hash table. So what are the different hashing techniques? First hashing technique. Presentation. Second division. Third one mid square. And fourth one that is nothing but folding. So these are the some techniques that are used to store the data into your hash table, right? Means all these methods, all these methods do only one thing. It is having the only one purpose, and that purpose is nothing but finding out, finding out the hash value, finding out the hash value, or it is also called as the index. These all the techniques. That are used for finding only the your hash value where your element is actually going to store, right? Whatever your element, where that element must be stored into your hash table, this is calculated by all these methods. So we require some calculation for this techniques or for this hash. Whenever you are using a hash table, means you have to do the sum calculation. You have to do the sum calculation. Okay. So in that first technique, that is nothing but truncation, or it is also called as an extraction. It is also called as an extraction. Right. Now, with the help of this technique, how we can store the element into your hash table? See, first technique that is a truncation. You are truncation. Here, whenever a value is stored into hash table, whenever any element that is stored into the hash table, the Capacity of hash table. You must know the capacity or how many indexes are available. How many indexes are available into your hash table? Okay. 
if your hash table is having the there is an index from 0 to 99 there is an index from 0 to 99 okay right means how many values you can store you can store 100 values into that hash table from which location to which location 0 to 99 means whatever the index value you have whatever the index value you have that index value must be in between 0 to 99 okay then how to calculate at which location you are going to store the value at which location you are going to store the value with the help of this method with the help of this method okay right so here what we are going to do we are going to consider or we are going to extract well, this is also called as the extraction another name is the extraction and what we are going to do here we are going to extract the rightmost number from your given element from your given element we are going to extract or we are going to select last two digits last two digits where we can store our element right for example suppose our key value is suppose our key value is like this and i want to store this value into hash table i want to store this value into hash table so what i'm going to do in this technique i'm going to extract two values from your key value i'm going to extract two values from your key value from rightmost select what is the element or what is that value What is that value? 8 and 9. 8, 9 means what? 89. And what range we are having, index range, what we are having? We are having range from 0 to 99. Means this element, this whole element is stored into hash table at position or at index at 89 where it is stored into at 89 position it is stored suppose another example suppose your key is like this where it will be stored into your hash table 56 56 simple calculation what we have done we have just extracted last two digits from your key what we have done we have extracted last two digits from your given key okay right now suppose your hash table is having capacity of only 10 elements and the range is from 0 to 9 then in such a case extract last one digit extract last one digit means for for this number its index Nine. for this its index is a six. six okay what is first hashing technique is nothing but your truncation or it is also called as a extraction right now the second technique Second technique, we are going to use division, or which is also called as a modulo division, which is also called as a modulo division. Okay, now what we are going to do in this technique? See, here division, this technique means here we are going to divide your key element. 
what we are going to do we are going to divide our t element but by division by division means here we are going to calculate the index value by using modulus by using the modulus operator means what here we are going to find the remainder here we are going to find the remainder and how to calculate this remainder for uh, for example here if your if your key is having some value as of like this 1 2 3 5 this is a key value then then your h of k h of k means hash value for k okay h stands for h hash and your k stands for your key right it is calculated by using the formula k mod m k mod m where m is nothing but size of table m stands for the size of table in previous example we have seen capacity is 100 elements capacity is 10 elements that capacity is nothing but size okay right now what we are having the key value as of 1 2 3 5 5 okay 1235 5 this is the our key value and i want to store this cache key value into the hash table which size is what is the size of m or what is the size of hash table it is a 10 means what how many index are there nine index are there okay now where this value is to be going to store we are having the function c this is the hash function this is your hash function k mod m means what here k modulus of letter m means 1 2 3 5 u modulus m is nothing but 10 what will be the output hmm. what will be the output 1 2 3 5 u mod 10 mod is nothing but here we are going to calculate the remainder what we get here remainder right by dividing this key value or with the help of or that table size we will get a remainder as a 5 so your element is stored at 5 index your element is stored at 5 index just we have to calculate the remainder just we have to calculate the remainder okay another value is there suppose 98 is there okay what we have to do 98 mod 10 is equal to 8 your 98 is stored into your 8 index okay first technique is the truncation or extraction second technique is nothing but division or it is also called as a modular division where we are going to calculate the modulus for given value right we are going to calculate modulus for given value and according to the remainder we are going to store our index or our element at that particular index that's it right key value it is stored at that particular index and how it is calculated h of k is equal to k mod m this is the your first hash function where we have calculated the hash value okay then the third technique see third technique is our mid square
Okay, third technique, mid square. Now, what we are going to do here in this technique, mid square. In this technique, first we are going to square our element. What we are going to do? We are going to square the our element value. Okay, for example. Suppose your P is a 235. P value is a 235. Okay. And H of K is equal to L, where L is nothing but middle value. L is nothing but middle value from your square. Middle value from your square. See how to do this. First, what we are going to do? We are going to square our p value, right? Means see hmm. k square. What is the square? Two thirty five square. What is the value of this? Here you have to calculate it. Here you have to calculate it. Calculate it. Hmm. Two thirty five into two thirty five. In what? Five five two two five. Okay, so this is the our square value, right? This is our square. And what we are going to do here? We are going to calculate, or we are going to select the middle value from this square, or we are going to just remove. From element from left side and element from right side. Okay. For, for example, this is our element. Okay. Five, five, two, five. I will read it like this. Five, five, two, two, five. Now what we have to do? We have to do. We have to select the middle element. We have to select the middle element. Right. For example, remove this. Remove this. Five five we have removed again one from left side one from right side remove elements now whatever will be there at middle that is the index value for your element that is the your index value for that element means this element two thirty five it is stored at index two it is stored at index two right. Another example. Suppose you are having the element. Suppose you are having the element as a eighty three. What is the square of eighty three? Eighty three square. Hmm. Eighty three into eighty three. Six eight eight nine. Okay. This is our key value, right? Square of your key value, and this is going to be stored into your hash table with the capacity of hundred. Suppose you want to store into the hash table with the capacity of hundred. Then what you have to do? You have to just remove the element left side, right side. Whatever will be there at middle, that is the index position. That is nothing but it's a index position. So in this technique, what you have to do, you have to just square the your key and find out the middle element. Find out the middle elements by removing right side. Okay, got it. So this is the third hashing technique with the help of which we are going to calculate the different index position for different. Element. Okay. Then now the la next last technique to calculate the hash value is nothing but for one is nothing but folding method. Okay. First we have same truncation. Second division method. Third one is a mid square method and last we are going to see the folding method your hash function is calculated by 
adding a different keep value, different keep value from that element. Okay, means here what we have to do if you are given element. Suppose we are having an element. What we are going to do? We are going to divide the element first, or we are going to make partitions for element. We are going to divide, or we are going to make partitions for your element, and then we are going to adding that partitions. We are going to adding that partitions and. Whatever the final result will be there, whatever the final result will be there, according to that we are going to calculate the index. We are going to calculate the index. Okay. For example, suppose your key value is p is equal to one two three four five six seven eight nine. This is the key value. Okay. This is the key value. And I want to store this value into your hash table, which having a capacity of hundred. Capacity की तरह दीजिए hundred capacity. Where I want to store this element. So what we have to do? See how hash function works. H of k is equal to k one plus k two plus k three plus up to k n. Means what? This key. We have to divide into sub keys. This key we have to divide into sub keys. For example, C one two three plus four five six plus seven eight nine, like this. Means how we have divided C one, C two, C three. Okay. In this way, you can do your folding. Folding means what? We are going to partition your key, and we are going to add this partition. We are going to add this partition. Make addition. Hmm. One two three plus four five six plus seven eight nine. What is the value? One three six eight. Okay. Now for this value, you can use either your Truncation, either mid square or you can use modulus. Whatever you want to use, you can use here. Right? For example, if you want to use the truncation, then what we do? Sixty-eight. Last two digits. Last two digits. We are going to extract last two digits. Okay? Right? Then, if you want to use the modulus. For modulo division method, then you have to just make modulus of this. This equal to eight. This value will be stored at eight position, right? So in this folding method, first your key is divided into sub parts, and then we are going to add that sub parts, and whatever the key value we will get. See, this is the key value, and how we have got it by calculating or by adding the different sub keys, right? And finally, you can calculate the index by using any one technique: use truncation, use mid square, or use modulo division, which will give the final hash value. Okay, right? Then next. Here, this technique, whatever you have done here, whatever you have done here, this is a folding method. This is the word folding method, and this is also called as a path folding. This is also called as a path folding. In short, here we are going to divide. Or it is also called as a shift folding. Shift folding. We have divided the your whole key elements into three parts or number of parts, whatever may be there, and we have just added it 
then you have applied the technique mid square truncation whatever modulo division apply that technique find out the final key value okay this is your shift folding this is your shift folding okay another folding technique is there that is called as the boundary folding boundary folding there are two folding techniques shift folding now we have just seen now another one is the shift folding where in this for a boundary folding in this technique we are going to add the elements or just we have to do the same procedure we have to add the number of sub keys we have to add the number of sub keys but here whatever the first and last number of your key or first and last key that will be reverse that will be reverse means what suppose you have this number it is divided into k1 123 k2 456 and k3 789 okay means there are three sub keys k1 k2 and k3 what we have to do first sub key and last sub key first sub key and last sub key value these two values are reverse these two values are reverse means what 1 to 3 become 3 to 1 plus 4 5 6 you have to keep as it is and this 7 and 9 will be reverse as 9 8 7 7 okay then whatever value will become apply mid square technique again apply division whatever technique you have to apply you can apply here okay right so in boundary shifting whatever the boundaries values boundary means what either first key or last boundary ka sharma to apan first or last right the keys that are present at end the keys that are present at end means what either first or last so whatever the first key and whatever the last key you have to just reverse that key and make addition of all keys whatever the final value suppose the final value is like this 2 3 5 okay and here first apply modulo division 100 that is nothing but 56 56 will be the key value a uh, hash value where your element is stored okay got it so all these are the hashing technique with the help of this hashing technique we are going to calculate only the hash value and whatever the functions that are used for calculating this hash value that is called as a hash function that is called as a hash function okay all get it samajh lega sagalana sir ha bola sir addition uh, 1764 hai the whatever i have just written as a random number i have just written i have not calculated the addition whatever addition may be there i have just written as a random number okay what we have to do this number is modulated by 100 and whatever the last value is there this value is nothing but the index value okay Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So these four, these are the four hashing techniques. These four are the hashing techniques with the help of which we are going to calculate the hash value. Okay. Now there is one drawback of this hashing. There is one drawback of this hashing, and that drawback is nothing but. by storing any key value suppose for example if you want to store the key value 
26 and 36 with the help of using some method division method for the table I mean m size as a 10 right what is the index value or what is the hash value hmm. for k1 h of k1 is equal to cast up the formula right k1 mod m 26 mod 10 is equal to 6 okay and for hash value of k2 k2 means the time k value 2 hmm. calculate k2 mod m 36 mod m 10 hmm. is equal to 6 means what means what here you may get you may get the two value or two hash value same for different key value hash value may be same for different key value okay this is the main drawback of your hashing technique this is the main drawback of your hashing technique okay and if such a condition is occurred in your hashing mean what if there is the same key value for different key value same hash value for different key value see this is the hash value for your 26 and this is the hash value for your 36 both are having the same hash value if such a condition is occurred this condition it is called as a collision this is called as a collision so collision it is the condition in hash table when when it occurs whenever you are going to store the two key values having a same hash value don't key value is same hash value are same right at that time you will get the collision message okay so this collision must be removed this collision must be removed and there are some techniques for removing this collision there are some techniques for removing this collision okay and what are the techniques see So all of you got it. What is mean by collision? Right? Are you understand what is mean by collision? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All values are a plus hash value are same. That is called collision occur. So this collision is avoided by using collision techniques, where there are two techniques. First one is the open and another one is the close. That is nothing but here we are going to do the open hashing and close hashing. There are two techniques where open hashing it is done by using chaining and close hashing is done by three different techniques. First linear probing quadratic so another form of quadratic quadratic probing and last one is a double hashing okay there are two techniques first one is open hashing second one is the closed hashing open hashing it is also called as a chaining and another one is a closed hashing which is done by using linear probing quadratic probing and double hashing all these techniques are used to avoid the collision to avoid the collision we are going to use one of these techniques okay so in that 
first one is nothing but chaining. So how to use this technique? First one is the chaining or open hatching. You can see how to do this open hatching or chaining, right? Now, in this, whatever the key elements are there, we are going to store the key elements with the help of in linked list. They are stored into linked list, means here. Here, whenever the elements are stored into the hash table, right? Your hash table maintains a linked list where all these elements are stored. Okay. Chain. All of you seen the chain, right? There is a link between two elements. One element is linked with another element, or one chain it is linked with another chain, such as like this. Your elements are stored into your this hashing or open hashing or chaining, right? For example, suppose we are having a key. There are some number of keys like this: 29, 42, 45, 89, 32, and 85. Suppose these are the elements. These are the elements. Okay, and we want to store these elements into our hash table, which are having a size m is equal to 10. Okay, hash table size 10, hash table size is equal to 10, means m is equal to 10. This is the m value. Now, calculate the index value for all the elements. Calculate index value for all the elements by using a function. See, by now calculating the index value here, you can use any technique. We have seen the four techniques for calculating the index value truncation, division, then mid square, and last folding method. Use any one method. The most popular method is the modular division. Most popular method is the modulo division. Okay, now 29, 29 is equal to 29. What is the rate of k using modulo division? Hmm. Using modulo division, what is the hash value for your element k? 9. 9. Good. 9. Okay. If k is equal to 42, what is the age of k? 2. 2. Right? Then 45 is a 5. 89. 5. 9. 9. 32. 2. And 85. 5. 5. Okay. Now see. 29, it is stored at position 9. 29, it is stored at position 9. Now see. Whenever the elements are stored in your hash table in chaining or by using a chaining, then every element is stored like a node. Every element is stored like a node. And a node, it, every node is having two fields. Singly linked list node. What node is there? Singly linked list node. There are two fields. One, that actual field that is called as a data field. Another one is the address field, which store the address of next node. Okay, so first value, what we are going to store? The 29. And where we are going to store it? At 9. Means, suppose address of this 29 is a thousand. Address of this 29 is a Thousand means what? This twenty-nine element having a address of the thousand. So address is stored at 
that particular index. Address is stored at that particular index. Okay. Now next, next forty-two. Where we have to store it? Two. Here forty-two. Then forty-five. Stored at forty-five. Okay. Then eighty-nine. Now eighty-nine. It is going to store at the index nine, but there is a already already one element that present at a index nine. So what we are going to do? This index or this element, we are going to insert the beginning of your linked list. Means what? Here we are going to store or we are going to insert this element. Before the twenty nine, before the twenty nine. So whatever the address of your eighty nine, suppose your address of eighty nine, it may be two thousand. It may be two thousand. So first, as we are inserting this eighty nine before the twenty nine, means address. Of eighty nine, it is stored here. And first element is your eighty nine, which is linked with another element that is the number twenty nine. So twenty nine will be shifted to the right. Twenty nine will be shifted to right, and your eighty nine will be stored at that position. Similarly, here thirty two ten. Forty-two is shifted to right, and here thirty-two will be inserted. Again, eighty-five, ten, eighty-five, and then forty-two. Like this, uh, we are making a chain. Like this, we are making a chain. Means elements are stored into the linked list. Elements are stored into the linked list. See. Now you can insert number of elements at same index. You can store number of elements at same index. There is no problem of collision. There is no problem of collision. So this is the first technique. This is the first technique where we can use the chaining method. What we have done here? Chaining means we have linked the element. To one another, which are having same hash value, the element those are having the same hash value. We have linked up all the elements together, and address of first element is stored as a key value. Okay, got it? Understand what I have studied here? What we have done? We have calculated the first index value. According to index value, we have done. How many elements are stored at that particular index? Okay. If there are three elements, whatever the last element, or just we are going to insert the element at the beginning. We are going to insert the element at beginning. Okay. This is the first technique to avoid the collision. Or whenever there is a collision, you can use this technique. So it will find a new address for your element. Okay, then next. Next is the thing about closed hashing, and closed hashing. It is done by three ways. Next one is the closed hashing. And this is done by three ways. First one is the linear probing. Second one is the quadratic probing. And third one is the double hashing. Okay, these are the three ways where you can do closed hashing. And this is also used for. Collision resolution, collision resolution technique. I mean, now you can call it as a collision resolution 
technique. Okay. In that first one, we have seen that is a chaining. Next, we are going to see that is nothing but linear probing. See. Next technique is a linear probing. Uh, for example, let's see some key elements. T e is equal to 10 value we have 29, 42, 45, 89, 32, 85. Okay. And your hash table is 0 to 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, this is a hash table. Right? Now see in linear probing. First, same technique we have to apply. We have to calculate the index value first. What we are going to do? We are going to calculate the index value. Okay. Where m is equal to 10. What is the size of table? M is equal to 10. Now for 29, h of k is equal to K mod M means for 29 mod M is equal to 9. Index value is a 9. So we are going to insert 29 at 9 position. 29 at 9 position. Okay. Next 42. Calculate index value 10. 42 mod 10 is equal to 2. Which will be stored at 42. Okay. Then next 45. 45 mod 10. Position. 5. 45. Then next 89. 89 Nine position. Mod M. What happened? No, sir. 9 position. I'm not getting what you want to say. 89 at 9 position. Ah, okay. 89 will be stored at 9 position. But, but what is the problem there? 89 at 9 position where there is a already one element. Where there is a already one element. And that element is nothing but 29. Now, if such a condition occurs, if such a condition occurs, then we are going to apply the linear probing. Linear probing apply karnarov. So here we are going to calculate the new index value. See, here we are going to calculate the new index value for even this element. Which one is that? 89. See, h of k is equal to. 89 mod 10 is equal to 9. Means what? H of k value is the H of k value is now 9. Okay. By using a linear probing. How to use linear probing? See. H of k comma i. This i is nothing but probe number. Probe number. Means how many times you have shifted or how many times you have moved your element. How many times you have moved your element? That is nothing but probe number. Okay. H of k of i is equal to c. What you have to do? H of k plus i mod 10. H of k plus i mod 10. Now, what is the value of h of k? Hmm. What is the value of h of k? 9. Nine. Here we are already having the value. 9 plus i. Now, first time we got a collision. First time we got a collision. So, i value is a 1. I value is a 1. How many times you got a collision? How many times you got a collision? That is nothing but 
probe number. That is nothing but your probe number. First time, but first time we are going to spot the 89 here and we found that there is a 29 number. Means what? First time we got a collision. So I value is a 1. 9 plus 1 more 10. Hmm. 10 more 10. What will be the value? Zero. Zero. Means what? This 89 now will be stored at index 0. Okay? Now, second number. Let's check another number. Hmm. Then you equal to 10. 89. 32. For 32, what we have to do? Just calculate it. Hmm. H of K is equal to 32 more 10 is equal to 2. Okay? Right? Next. Tula already element present. There is only one element. You can store at index. Now what we are going to do? We are going to calculate the new index. What how to calculate? H of K comma I is equal to H of K plus 1 and whole modulus K. Hmm. H of K is a 2 plus how many times you got the collision? For one. this number. Or 32. Or 32. One. one time only. Okay. 2 plus 1 more 10. 3 more 10 is equal to 3. Means this 32 it is stored at 3. Okay. Now. Suppose instead of I will take another number as a 62. Now for 62, see H of K is equal to 62 more 10 is equal to 2. Okay? Right? Tool of already value presented. Right? Means H of K I is equal to H of K plus I mod 10. What happened? 2 plus 1 is mod divided by 10 is equal to 3 mod 10. Right? H of K of I. But, but what happens here? Now, for this index, also there is a one element. For this index also there is a one element. Now this i value is again implemented by one. Means what? For this number, for 62, collision is occurred at this position. Again collision is occurred at this position. Means how many times collision is occurred? How many times? Two times. Two times. Now the probe number is two. Probe number is now what is there? 2. And you have to just do the calculation. Right? You have to just do the calculation. Like this, you have to calculate the linear probing. Linear probing means what? Your value is or index is incremented by 1 by 1. 1 by 1, your index value is incremented. And this is the function of your linear probing. H of K plus I mod M. This is the function for your linear probing where I will be the probe number. I will be the probe number. How many times collision gets occurred? This is nothing but your probe number. Okay. Then second technique. That is nothing but quadratic. Ah, in quadratic, what? Just only one change is there. I will take it. Another technique that is nothing but quadratic. Which 
भंडारे सर एडी देर तो सीखा रहे In this quadratic probing, see in linear probing, what we are selecting, we are incrementing your probe number as the one by one. Your probe number is incremented by one by one. But in quadratic probing, here your incrementation is depends on probe number square. Incrementation or index value depends on probe number. Square means instead of using this function, see what we are going to use here. What function we are going to use here? First, we are going to calculate sin as it is. See, h of k is equal to k mod m. This is our first function. Okay, this is our first function. K mod y. Right now, if you are getting a same index value for two numbers, if you are getting same index value for two numbers, then what you have to do? See, for example, if k is equal to thirty-two, sixty-two, eighty-two. Suppose these are the numbers: thirty-two, then sixty-two, and eighty-two. These are the three numbers that you want to store into this. Hmm. For thirty-two, we are going to calculate h of k. Thirty-two mod ten is equal to two. Means thirty-two is stored at index two. Okay. Now for sixty-two, ten. We are going to calculate the index. Hmm. H of k is equal to sixty-two mod two is equal to sorry sixty-two mod ten is equal to two. Now, for index two, there is only you can store only one element. Means here collision occurs. Here collision occurs. Now, what we are going to do here? We are going to change our index. By using quadratic probing, and how to do this? See, h of k i is equal to h of k plus i square mod k. Now, how many times collision is occurred? For sixty-two, it is occurring first time. For sixty-two, it is occurring first time. So, what happened? Ah. Huh. H of k means two plus i square means a one square divided by modulus ten. Hmm. Two plus one mod ten is equal to three. Your element is stored at a three. Okay. Now next for eighty two. Eighty two first position is two. Okay. By using quadratic, you will get third position as a three. Right means what? Here, this eighty-two is having collision at two index for thirty-two and sixty-two. Means this will make collision with index two also and index three also. Means here, probe number is now two. For eighty-two, probe number is a two. See how to calculate probe number. How many times collision occurs? How many times collision occurs? That is nothing but probe number. For thirty-two, it is already stored. Sixty-two, it is occurred only one time, so we have done one square. For eighty-two, it is occurring two times, so what we have done? Two square, two square, four. Hmm. Four plus two. Six mod ten. What will be the value? Six means this eighty-two is now stored at position at six. See, 
दिस इज नथिंग बट क्वाड्रेटिक प्रोबिंग याला काय म्हणतात तुमच्या ठिकाणी क्वाड्रेटिक प्रोबिंग मीन्स व्हॅल्यू इज स्टोर्ड बाय सम डिफरेंस और इट डिपेंड्स ऑन प्रोब नंबर स्क्वेअर क्वाड्रेटिक का म्हणायचं बिकॉज वी आर मेकिंग अ स्क्वेअर करते ठीक आहे प्रोब नंबर का स्क्वेअर वी आर मेकिंग अ स्क्वेअर ऑफ युअर प्रोब नंबर सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ क्वाड्रेटिक प्रोबिंग इन लीनियर प्रोबिंग युअर एलिमेंट आर स्टोर्ड इन टू द नेक्स्ट लोकेशन टू द नेक्स्ट लोकेशन टू द नेक्स्ट लोकेशन दिस इज अ लीनियर प्रोबिंग पण इन क्वाड्रेटिक प्रोबिंग युअर एलिमेंट्स आर स्टोर्ड बाय मीन्स ऑफ सम डिस्टन्स बाय मीन्स ऑफ सम डिस्टन्स फॉर एक्झाम्पल सेकंड एलिमेंट इज स्टोर्ड ऍट थ्री नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट इज स्टोर्ड ऍट डायरेक्टली सिक्स इंडेक्स देर इज सम गॅप बिटवीन दीज टू इंडेक्स okay so this is the hashing that is nothing but quadratic probing okay then next is nothing but double hashing the last technique we are going to see that is nothing but closed or double hashing in double hashing what we have to do simple meaning is double hashing means we are going to apply two hash functions we are going to apply the two hash function okay for example t is equal to 40 for you 60 for you 62 67 maybe any value okay so what actually first hash function we are going to do a mod m means 45 mod 10 is equal to 5 again now here whenever you are using a double hashing whenever you are using a double hashing then by selecting the hash table by selecting the hash table select the hash table with a size of your prime number select size with the prime number for example now i am instead of selecting as 10 i will select as 11 okay hash table as a 11 means for how many index are there 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 index are there see instead of selecting as a even number or odd number select your hash table with a prime number it will be beneficial for you it will be beneficially for you okay so what i have selected m size as a 11 now calculate 1 44 one what will be one so your 45 it is stored at one okay similarly 65 65 mod 11 say 65 hmm. 60 say 1 then 67 will be stored at now see 67 mod 11 it are in the ordinary this value will be 1 see here index value is 1 but at 1 there is a already one element present and that number is your 45 so what we are going to do for this index value if there is a collision then we are going to do the another hash function h1k is equal to or in this here a minus a mod a any value you can take there any function you can apply there 7 minus k mod 7 6 minus k mod 6 9 minus k mod 9 any value you can take there as a hash function 
what will happen e eight minus what is the k value sixty seven mod eight huh what is the reminder calculate the reminder three eight minus three right is equal to five okay now we got two hash value we got the Two hash value. Which one is that? Five and one. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to make addition of these two. Means what? Five plus one, and then we are making modulus with your original table, right? In which table we are going to store it? In that, for that we are going to calculate the index with hash value one plus hash value. Second and then just calculate it. Six mod eleven is equal to six. So you have this element sixty-seven will be stored at index seven six. Okay. So this one is the first hash function and this one is your another hash function. Here we are using two hash function, so it is called as a double hashing. Okay, got it. So in this way, your collision will be resolved by using this technique. First one is the open hashing, where we are using chaining linked list. Another one is the closed hashing, where we are using linear probing, quadratic probing, and third one is your double hashing. Okay, I hope all of you got what is mean by the hashing. what are the different techniques to calculate the hash value and the last how to resolve the collision okay thank you sir